Hey guys, it's Bios Ramos, and today I'm going to be bringing you the Miami Dolphins mid-season review. Uh, basically, I'm going to go from week one to week nine, even though we had a bye week, so that technically makes it halfway through the season, given that the Dolphins have to play 16 uh, regular season games to complete their season. So, now that we have eight, half of those 16 out the way, let's dive into it. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. So, first game of the season, we opened it up at the Hard Rock Stadium against the Baltimore Ravens. And man, oh man, was this a horrendous outing for the Miami Dolphins. Final score was 59 Baltimore, Miami Dolphins 10. Um, just was not pretty. Lamar Jackson had 17, went 17 for 20, 324 yards, and five touchdowns. That's absurd. And then, not only that, Mark Ingram had 14 carries for 107 yards, two touchdowns. Marquise Brown, or other people know him as Hollywood Brown, four receptions, 147 yards, two touchdowns as a rookie, first game of the regular season ever. So, a lot of people were thinking that this guy has a very um, insane season ahead of him, but that wasn't really the case. It was just Miami Dolphins. Uh, just weren't really that good at that time. Now that being said, let's go over the scoring summary. We have three straight touchdowns from the Ravens in the first quarter, then an, uh, another touchdown to follow it up in the second quarter. Then the Dolphins answer back with a field goal, and then Ravens pile on two other TDs, and then the Dolphins finally score the first touchdown, and then another TD from Baltimore, a field goal, and another touchdown. That led Miami to starting off the season 0-1, and horrible time of possession, three turnovers going against us. Baltimore had 643 yards of offense. Meanwhile, um, Miami only had 200. So that goes to tell you how lopsided that game was. Now, let's look over to week two, where we faced off the New England Patriots. So then week two, we followed the Ravens game up with another um, AFC opponent, AFC East opponent, to be honest. Uh, the New England Patriots. Week two, Dolphins finally unveiled their white throwback uh, uniforms, which are now their color rush as well. And um, besides that, the Patriots steamrolled the Miami Dolphins 43-0, to zero, zilch. Um, and this led a lot of concern in Miami. Tom Brady, 20 of 28, 264 yards, two touchdowns. Um, Sonny Michelle, 21 carries, 83 yards, one touchdown. And Antonio Brown, four receptions, 56 yards, and one touchdown. Those were the highlight players from the Patriots. Um, notice how I didn't really go over the Dolphins highlight players because they didn't really put in a, a, a key game. Uh, Josh Rosen had to come in at some point in the game because Fitzpatrick threw like three interceptions um, and... Rosen threw an interception as well on the last drive for the Dolphins. Um, another bad game offensively. 379 yards for the Patriots offensively to the Patriots. Uh, Dolphins having 184. So they even went down in yardage to the Patriots. But also that the, the offense just could not muster anything. Could even put up one single point on the board. It was very embarrassing. Touchdown, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, 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 Patriots. All of that, Patriots. Uh, Patriots had undoubtedly a chance of winning this game. <laughs> now let's take it to week three, our first road game. The Miami Dolphins went up to Dallas, Texas to face the Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys were 3-0 at the time. And the Dolphins are still, I mean, they were one, uh, 2-0. And the Dolphins were 0-2. Uh, and this was the first game that Josh Rosen started for the Miami Dolphins. Josh Rosen went 18 for 39, 200 yards. Meanwhile, Dak Prescott went 19 of 32 for 246 yards. Two touchdowns and one interception by Bobby McCain. Then we have Kenyon Drake didn't really do much. 12 carries, 38 yards. To Ezekiel Elliott going 19 carries, 125 yards. And then to add to that... Uh, the backup running back, Tony Pollard, had another um, 100 yards rushing as well. So, Dolphins is going to stop the run this game. 
Uh, Preston Williams had four receptions, 68 yards, and Amari Cooper had six receptions for 88 yards and two touchdowns on Xavier Howard. Um, one of them was on the goal line, and then one of them was just a breakaway touchdown. Uh, and then one of his other catches was just uh, a big play action play. A lot of defense got sucked up. Secondary was running with their with their players, and then X was running strife for side with Amari coming across the field right, and then he looks for a second in the backfield, and that's when Amari Cooper just went whoop and went back up to the other side of the field and was wide open for a pass. Um, that 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 did not lead into a touchdown though. Uh, so the final score was six to thirty one. Dolphins lost. Uh, and you're seeing a trend here. Dolphins are not putting up any points on the board whatsoever. Um, then let's take it to back home, week four, right before I buy week, week five. Um, and the Dolphins are facing off the LA Chargers here in Miami. And the final score is 30-10. to 10. Miami Dolphins lost another game, putting them down to 0-4, while the Chargers were 2-2 two and two after the game. Phillip Rivers went 24 for 30, 310 yards, two touchdowns. Um, and Josh Rosen, this was his second game starting, and he went 17 for 24, 180 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Uh, Austin Eckler, he had 18 carries for 60 yards, one touchdown, and he also had a bunch of receiving. Uh, he got he got a bunch of passes. Uh, one of his passes caught was an 18-yard touchdown from Phillip Rivers right before halftime. Um so the scoring drives, uh, Devon, let's also mention Devontae Parker had four receptions, 70 yards, one touchdown. That was a pretty good game out of him. The scoring uh, went like this. Dolph, uh, Chargers field goal, Dolphins score a touchdown and have the first lead ever of the season. Going into week four, that's pretty embarrassing. Uh, then the Chargers quickly come, come back in the first quarter and score another touchdown following that. Then in the second quarter, Dolphins uh, score a field goal to tie up the game and then the Chargers score a touchdown right before halftime making it 17-10 and then after that pretty much it was field goal touchdown field goal for the Chargers and the Dolphins could not come back whatsoever um, total yards of offense for the Chargers was 390 Dolphins 233 so Dolphins were getting better um, offensively moving the ball so then comes then uh, Dolphins go into a bye week and then after the bye week they come off and face the 0-5 Washington Redskins. So a lot of people are saying this is a tank bowl. Uh, tank bowl honestly might be the Cincinnati Bengals versus Miami Dolphins game in December. Um, hopefully the Bengals have at least mustered a win or something by that time because Dolphins desperately need that to happen uh, because we can help control our own destiny by losing to the Jets uh, in the next time we face them if they have not gotten a win yet. Um, but nonetheless, let's continue on with this. Uh, Case Keenum went 13 for 25, 166 yards, two touchdowns. That wasn't really a good game from Casey Keenum, to be honest. Um, and then Adrian Peterson, though, he had a great game. 23 carries, 118 yards. He, the uh, Redskins definitely rode uh, Adrian Peterson to victory. And uh, Terry McLaurin, I think that's his name, T. McLaurin, a uh, wide receiver for Washington, four receptions, 100 yards flat, two touchdowns. He definitely destroyed the Dolphins in this game. Uh, Josh Rosen started this game, but then he threw two picks, and then they put in Fitzpatrick, and he got us close to getting the win, pretty much. Um, without Fitzpatrick, I don't think the Dolphins would have had a chance of possibly winning this game, given the final score is 17-16. to The Dolphins uh, scored... A touchdown with six seconds left, a strike from Fitzpatrick to Devontae Parker, and then they follow it up with one of the dumbest two-point conversion plays I've ever seen. Um, that being said, it was horribly executed. Uh, you have two big wide receivers like Preston Williams and Devontae Parker, and you decide to throw a little screen pass behind the line of scrimmage to your running back who has been struggling to catch the ball in general, and he misses the catch. Uh, very... Very dumb play, but a lot of people are saying they did that just to uh, just to win the game. I mean, to lose the game and keep their losing streak going. But the Dolphins had a great time of possession in this game. Washington had 27 and 21 seconds, uh, 27 minutes, 21 seconds, and the Dolphins had 32 minutes and 39 seconds. And uh, 
The offensive output with yards wasn't really that great. 311 for the Redskins, 271. We were pretty close. Um, but the Dolphins had a lot more first downs. Washington only had 13. Meanwhile, the Dolphins had 21. And this is how the scoring summary went. Touchdown, uh, Washington, field goal, Miami. Touchdown, Washington, field goal, Washington. Touchdown, Miami, touchdown, Miami. Um, so Dolphins fought their way back, and but still ended up losing the game. But you saw the fight in the Dolphins, and you saw what they could possibly do. And, you know, that definitely carried over into this next game against the Buffalo Bills. Miami Dolphins, 21. Buffalo Bills, 31. The score is half the story of the game. So let's talk about the starting quarterback for this game. Ryan Fitzpatrick started this game after uh, the week before the Washington game. Uh, Flores said that Josh Rosen is going to be the starter throughout the year for the rest of the year, yada, yada, yada. Um, then after that game, that's it. It's, it's done uh, for him, it looks like. But yeah, Ryan Fitzpatrick, 23 for 35, uh, 282 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Compared to Josh Allen, going uh, 100, uh, 16 for 26, 202 yards and two interceptions. Uh, Mark Walton had a great game, and this was where you saw the beginning of the end for Kenyon Drake. Uh, Mark Walton, 14 carries, 66 yards. Then Frank Gore had 50, uh, 11 carries for 55 yards. Uh, Preston Williams, six receptions, 82 yards. And John Brown, or other people call him Smokey Brown, he had... Five receptions, 83 yards, and a touchdown, and completely destroyed the Dolphins' secondary. So the Dolphins had two turnovers in this game. Uh, one was a fumble from Mark Walton, and then another was an interception by Ryan Fitzpatrick coming out of halftime. Uh, so this is how it went. Uh, scoring was field goal, field goal, uh, Buffalo twice. Then Dolphins score a touchdown to take the lead. And then uh, another field goal from Buffalo. And then Miami scores a touchdown right before halftime. And then coming out of the half, uh, Dolphins get possession. Driving down the field. Uh, a, a, a placement of a ball got pretty short. So then Dolphins faked the field goal. Ended up getting the first down. And then kept on moving the clock. And then um, it finally led to Fitzpatrick throwing an interception uh, right at the two-yard line. And that after that, the Dolphins lost momentum of this entire game. Even though we had bled a lot of clock uh, before that, about seven to eight minutes or so of a drive before the interception. So the Dolphins would have been in great, great position, uh, up 21 to 9 possibly, and at worst 17. Um, but no, uh, the Dolphins turned it over. Then the Bills instantly went back. Scored a touchdown, another touchdown. Dolphins scored a touchdown, finally. Then after the Dolphins scored a touchdown, they try an onside kick, and then they kick it to um, Micah Hyde. And then what happens there is Micah Hyde spins around like this while catching the ball. And uh, while he's catching the ball, and then takes it back for a touchdown. The Dolphins did not even bear, like, dare to look at the ball. They just kicked it and attacked whatever's in front of you and then hopefully the ball becomes loose. So that was a horrible play by the Miami Dolphins uh, that definitely led to their defeat because it was 21-24 at that time and if they recover that onside kick, they have a great chance to win that game. But that was not the case. And the Dolphins losing streak extends to six games. Miami Dolphins had 381 total yards to Buffalo's 305. Pretty funny, 305 Miami. Um, Dolphins had 33 minutes and 31 seconds of possession to the Bills' 26 minutes and 29 seconds. Miami had 24 first downs. Buffalo had 17. I mean, the Dolphins were winning pretty much in every aspect of this game besides turnovers, and that's what killed them. Next, we go and have our first primetime game of the year at the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And if the game ended in the first quarter, Dolphins would have won. 14-0, uh, but that was not the case. That was not the case. You got to play four quarters, and that's what the Dolphins pretty much did not do. Uh, final score was 14-27. to Miami Dolphins lost. Ryan Fitzpatrick went 21 for 34, 190 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions, both to, you can guess it, Minka Fitzpatrick. 
Yep, the guy we traded away for the first round pick intercepted us twice. One, I won't really count it because it popped up and it just landed in his hands. But the other one, he was playing safety and uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick just chucked it up to Jakeem Grant, who was running pretty much up the field and completely bombed it. Like, horrible. Uh, he had a lot of pressure in his face. Mark Walton had 11 carries for 35 yards. Devontae Parker, six receptions seven of 59 yards. Uh, Mason Rudolph, this was his first game back from having his concussion in the game that he suffered from the Baltimore Ravens when Will Thomas and some other defensive guy sandwiched him. Boom, concussion. Hope debacle there. Um, but he went 20 for 36, 251 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Uh, Xavier Howard picked him off. Now, James Conner had 23 carries, 145 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, but he did leave the game with uh, a shoulder injury. So, who knows what's going on with him at the moment. Uh, I heard he's probably not playing this week. Then we have Juju Smith-Schuster going five receptions, 103 yards, and one touchdown. Now, and this touchdown was a pretty good grab. Um, scoring drives, uh, Dolphins, touchdown, touchdown, then... After that, it was all Steelers field goal, touchdown, 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 field goal. Uh, Dolphins just got blew out of the waters after the second quarter. Sucks. Now we go to the week nine game, and it's the halfway point of the season with eight games down under the Dolphins belt, and they finally get a win. They're no longer undefeated. They're no longer defeated. Uh, one and seven now after defeating the New York Jets. Adam Gase returned to Miami and took an L, and a very salty L. The score was 18 to 26. Uh, Sam Darnold went 27 for 39, 260 yards, one touchdown, and one interception to um, Jamal Waltz. And he's been playing pretty bad this season, honestly. He's been getting beat a lot for touchdowns, and that's been one of my complaints about him. In the red zone and such, he just gets beat pretty easily. But nonetheless, Le'Veon Bell, 17 carries, 66 yards. Jamison Crowder, 8 receptions, 83 yards, 1 touchdown. He had a pretty good game. He made a couple great grabs. He had one, like, one-handed crab. He was like, boom, in the middle of the field and such. Following that, we have Ryan Fitzpatrick going 24 for 36, 288 yards, and 3 touchdowns. Um, two of them were to Preston Williams, and then one of them was to Devontae Parker. Uh, rushing yards, Mark Walton had 12 carries for 29 yards. So the running game was not there, but definitely Ryan Fitzpatrick put the team on his back and threw us into his victory, uh, especially having six receptions for 95 yards from Mike Isecki, which was, I think, is one of his career highs. So the scoring summary goes touchdown Jets, touchdown Dolphins, touchdown Dolphins, touchdown Dolphins, safety Jets, uh, field goal Jets, and then uh, third quarter field goal Jets, field goal Dolphins, safety Dolphins, and field goal Jets, leading to the 18-26 game. We were pretty much even with the yardage. Uh, Jets had 321, and the Dolphins had 316. Uh, Jets got a lot of the yardage, pretty much in garbage time when... Dolphins were just trying to conserve the win. Jets' possession time was 28 minutes and 46 seconds to the Dolphins' tw uh, 31 minutes and 14 seconds. Dolphins had 22 first downs. The Jets had 17. And the Dolphins had no turnovers. Uh, so it was pretty good of a game for the Miami Dolphins. And that being said, the team was improving week by week by week by week. Everything you saw was minor improvements. And the Dolphins were trending in the upright direction. It wasn't a straight up shot. It was, um, uh, you know, and then finally they get to get a win against the New York Jets. And now if the draft happened today, it would be Bengals. Then it would be the Redskins. Then it would be the Jets. And then it would be us because we beat the Jets, even though we have the same record. Uh, that being said, uh, Dolphins have a pretty tough schedule ahead of them. Uh, tomorrow they will face off against the Indianapolis Colts, who are pretty hot right now. They are five and three, and they're three and one at home, so they're pretty hard to defeat at home. But then following that, we'll go back home, face the Bills, then go to play uh, the Browns in Cleveland. Then Eagles are gonna come to Miami to play us, and we're gonna go on a road two weeks in a row in New York to play the Jets and the Giants. 
Final home game is against the Bengals, Tank Bowl, and then finish off the season at New England. Uh, that being said, it's going to be a tough road for the Miami Dolphins, and I'm going to have the preview video uh, up later for the Colts game. I'm going to try to bang that one out after this game, after this video. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. Dolphins are 1-7, and, and they have a long road to go to this draft, this highly anticipated draft for the Miami Dolphins to see what they are going to do with their what it seems to be an early first round pick. Uh, so that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a nice thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the post notification bell option. And uh, not only that, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ramos and check out BiosandRamos.com. Thanks for watching and uh, fins up. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team.